All right, everybody, we're going to be kicking off here in just a moment. Uh, this is going to be a full check-in episode, a full check-in episode. I'm going to talk about uh, all of my projects and uh, mental, physical health stuff, uh, about what's been going on with me. It's been a little while since I've done an episode like this. So uh, stay tuned, tune in, feel free to hit the like and feel free to share this out there. And uh, we'll get started in just a few moments. See you soon. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's get into today's road reflection. Um, I think this is going to be a relatively quicker one than uh, <clears throat> we normally have. Uh, wearing the hat to kind of block the light from uh, from the spotlight there. Um, I'm doing that so I don't have to wear the sunglasses. I'm testing it out. I'm testing out the waters because... Um, and I'll get into a lot deeper detail about that is I'm testing out the waters because uh, I, I've gotten some uh, comments on the uh, virtual live comedy shows that I'm doing on the test that, uh, uh, pe you know, m missing my expressions is kind of a bummer for people uh, when they when they see me. So so I am trying to do see see how much of uh, of the light in the I've kind of positioned the light in a particular way. So it's not directly hitting me in the eyes. And then the, the hat, I think, also helps uh, protect it a little bit. Um, so we'll see how that works out. But um, this is going to be a full check in episode. So there aren't any real stories or um you know, uh, dives into histories or uh, strikes or labor movements or anything like that. This is purely a full check-in um, episode of Road Reflections. Um, and I haven't done one of these in quite some time, in a, in a pretty long time. It's been, I, I mean, I, honestly, I don't, I don't think I've really done a full check-in episode since I started doing these daily videos. Uh, so I kind of wanted to do one. It seemed like this was the appropriate week to do it. And um, <clears throat> I have about 10 things that I are 10, <clears throat> 10 or 11 things uh, that I'll talk about. Boy, my throat all of a sudden just got super dry. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Sorry about clearing my throat so much. It just weirdly got dry in the middle of uh, me just talking. Uh, so yeah, so I wanted to kind of talk about what's been going on with me. What are the projects I'm working on? What is the status of some of these projects, um, that I've mentioned, uh, a, a whole bunch. Um, and as you know, we usually start with the, a check-in at the top of the show about how I'm doing, uh, what my mental physical space is at, uh, what my, uh, project statuses usually are, what, what I'm working on, what I'm excited about, what I'm not excited about, what I'm concerned about, that sort of stuff. Usually, I try to try to keep it positive. I'm generally a a a, a positive, optimistic kind of person uh, to a fault sometimes. I, I and I and I totally know that that's um, a thing that I have, but I I tend to try to find um, positivity in in virtually uh, everything. Um, or, or a version of positivity in virtually everything, virtually everything, not, not always all the time. Uh, there are some things that are just shit, uh, and, uh, and we got to know that they're shit, but even then it's just like, oh, that's an opportunity to like push for a change, to fight for a, a cause, to be, to, to make a positive difference, you know, to, to make it not shit. Uh, so I, I'm usually like a pretty, pretty silver linings kind of guy. And, and usually, I mean, honestly, like that took me a really long time to get to because I spent so much of uh, my youth, I guess we could call it, just being kind of really morose and dramatic about things. And I'm not saying like, but I was like, I'm not saying that that's what people that go through like depression and stuff are, but I know I was like, I know I, I definitely overinflated problems a whole lot in my own head. 
um, problems that, you know, in the grand scheme of things weren't as, as big as what I was making them out to be. And I had a tendency of doing that and I had a pattern of doing that. And then I would kind of wallow in how bad things were. And I would, I don't know, I think I see, I, I was seeking like pity or something when I was a kid because, um, there wasn't really a whole lot of that happening in the old household. Uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of like commiserating happening and I kind of, to me, the, the notion of commiserating because of my personal experiences where commiseration usually led me to become more depressed and become less productive and become, uh, less of a happy individual. Um, I don't particularly, uh, find that to be valuable. Um, I'll bitch and complain about some certain things, but b like I look at the next step, which is what can we do? You know, like, oh man, I'm having this problem with this person and you know, this is all the things that they're doing to annoy me, but you know what? They're, that's something on me. Maybe I should be a better listener. Maybe I should take a couple days away from this individual, um, and let them know like, Hey, I care about you. I love you. But I, right now I have so much going on that I'm, I might not be the right person to help you in this situation. Is there somebody else you can go to and kind of be a little bit more proactive about things? That is what I find a lot more value in. And that's what helps me, um, in my mental health journey. It might not help you in yours. The commiseration might be the thing that kind of helps you a whole lot more. It's just not my, it's just not my cup of tea and I'm not particularly good at it anymore because I've never, I've never found the value in it. I'm not the commiseration guy. I'm always looking for that. Well, okay. This seems like this is, you know, let's, let's look at how we, th here's the problem. Let's look at how we can solve the problem. Here's what we can we do to adapt to the situation. Uh, that's just how my brain operates. That's just how my brain has always operated. And, you know, I uh, recently spent a lot of time having to suppress that uh, part of myself, uh, that part of my personality and who I was uh, to some respect, and it kind of sucked. Uh, and now I, I don't really have to do that anymore, but I am uh, learning that that can be a part of my personality, but because it's not a part of other people's personality, how can I apply that and work within? So this is another way that, you know, in my head, it's like, it's a, it's a problem solving thing. It's an adaptive mechanism of somebody might not need the problem solved right now. They are looking for the commiseration, uh, of the situation. How can I still be a positive light with while try, kind of commiserating, but still being the engineer, the problem solving adaptive person, um, and it's, and you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but again, a lot of it just kind of falls down to what does the individual want to do? Um, so, you know, that's kind of like how my brain just operates. My brain just kind of operates in a problem solving way because I've had to kind of work that way. Uh, if that makes any fucking sense is yeah. Like getting hung up on the problem has led me to become more depressed and become more sad and then uh extrapolate only negative things Oops, sorry uh extrapolate only negative things so i don't find that valuable but what i do find valuable is learning to adapt in the situation learning to look at the silver lining learning to be positive learning to see where um action can be valuable action can lead to a positive change that's that's sort of the things that i've um found helpful. So that's what kind of also the purpose of these check-ins, I think, is that it's it's a blend of the commiseration to be like, I'm having a problem here. This is how I think I should solve it. Maybe other people are having the same problem too. And uh, one, you're not alone and I'm not alone. And we're all kind of really going through this shit together. Uh, so, you know, um, I encourage you to be open about your thing. I encourage you to be open about what you're going through and what you need in the moment. Um, and that's sort of the purpose of these check-ins. So that's why I'm doing a, a you know, a, a much longer, uh, episode where it's specifically about the check-ins. So, um, you know, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is sleep. Uh, I, I've never particularly been like good at getting the, I, I don't know. I operate with six hours. Like I'm good at operating at six hours of sleep. Uh, some people need 
10, some people need four, some people need that, you know, regulated eight hours uh, every night. Usually for me, like six hours, solid, on point. Um, there was there was like a week or two where that was happening pretty, pretty well. And I was, you know, getting up at a relatively good time. Um, and as this thing is prolonged, I think sleep has been the, uh, the thing that has been the most challenging. Um, I don't have a good sleep schedule. Uh, not that I particularly had an awesome sleep schedule to begin with. Uh, I will say that. I don't think I particularly had an awesome sleep schedule to begin with. Uh, because I'm a touring performer, which means that, you know, I am going from city to city. Um, I am performing a at night, later in the evening, and then I will go hang out with people. Uh, so some nights I might go to bed at 10, 11 o'clock because I don't have a show or the show ends early and nobody wants to hang out. Other nights I'm going to bed at 1 p.m., 1 a.m. or 2 or 3 a.m., depending on how the evening plays itself out. Um, and then the following day waking up in order to, um, I, you know, if I have a day off and I'm staying put in that same city, I can kind of sleep in a little bit. But uh, for the most part, it was like getting up at 8, getting a couple of things done, you know, promo work, writing, uh, emails, what have you, um, and then getting to the next city to do my thing. So my sleep schedule varied all the time. And I kind of had, because I have that adaptive um, point in my brain, my brain kind of works in that adaptive mentality. Uh, that was always kind of fine with, with me because I kind of knew how to adapt with the day and shift things around and say, okay, I have... You know, like this recent tour was like, okay, I have six shows in a row. Uh, I will take the time to do those six shows in, into the, you know, and put my best foot forward um, and kind of figure out what I need to do to release the content that I want to release on a regular basis. Um, and that's what I did, you know, so I would kind of schedule my work day out accordingly. And it's funny because when I would go on tour, people would be like, have you seen this thing? Did you go do this thing and that thing? And it's just like, you know, it's not a vacation, right? Like I'm, I'm working. <laughs> um, and it's, it's hard for, for some people to make that differentiation between like touring being an aspect of a job because it is a job that I love and it is a job that I am very passionate about and, and enjoy very, very much is touring and performing comedy and writing and all these things. Right. Uh, but people kind of look at it as this lackadaisical vacation. Like you can do whatever you can be chill. You can go to this thing and see that thing and be all touristy and stuff. And it's like, no, I still like put in, you know, like a work day, like you, like you normally would, you know, like these tours don't happen magically. They kind of, uh, require somebody to sit down and contact venues and, you know, uh, plot out a route and uh, promote it so that people come out to see the fucking thing. So, uh, I still, it's, it's still a job. It's still like, it's still like putting in the hours. Um, and the adaptive thing is like when I would have those six days on the road and I would make sure that I'm getting out the content that I need to get to on a regular basis or contacting, um, venues or press or specific groups to come out to see my shows i'm get i'm i'm focusing on making sure i get those things done uh with the time that i have so that when i get to that day off when i get to that first sunday off in six days i can um kind of take it a, a little easy you know i can have a little bit of a relaxed day where uh i sleep until 11 o'clock and wake up you know, make some coffee, do a couple emails, do a little writing and watch a bunch of Star Trek. I can have that day uh, because I've done all this other stuff, right? With this particular situation, my sleep has been, uh, a, I think, a lot more erratic, to be honest. Um, I, I don't think, uh, you know, there are certain days where I can fall right asleep. Uh, you know, when I'm when I'm ready to go to bed, I'll work throughout the day I'll do the activities that I'll that I'll need to do throughout the day uh, you know from from making these videos editing these videos uh, hanging out with you guys in the chats as as I'm probably doing right now uh, eating exercising going for walks maybe going for a drive whatever it might be I, I, I would come back and you know it's like mid it's like 1130 
and I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta shut things down because my brain is turning into pudding. Um, and, uh, and there'd be some nights where I would just out, right? But the last couple nights particularly, um, have been kind of difficult, to be honest. Uh, I'm not falling asleep right away. I'm getting tired. Like, I can't sit at the computer and do stuff anymore. So I can't be productive. I've eaten food, drank some tea, drank some water, uh, laid still, closed my eyes, tried to... But it's just been really difficult the last couple days uh, to fall asleep properly. Like, last night I didn't fall asleep till 3 o'clock in the morning. Just couldn't fucking do it. And I, I mean, I was up a little bit later doing work, doing writing uh, for the, the this Citizen Revolution show on, on, on Friday. And, uh, and you know, I, I was very happy with what was written, what was done, how the day kind of progressed. Um, it kind of worked out to be a really good day. But I just couldn't fall asleep. And I had this really tough time. So... What's been happening lately is that I've been, once I do fall asleep, I'm getting into these like really intense, deep coma-like sleeps. And that's the only way that I, I like, I've never been in a coma, but I would assume that this is what a coma feels like because there are moments where I will hear things. Like I have my, I have my alarm clock that goes off every morning um, and I'm bad. At, I'm just, I'm also bad at waking up. Like, I'm, I'm really bad at getting up in the morning. So, like, if I want to get up at 8, I got to set an alarm for, like, 6.45 in the morning. And then at 7 a.m. And then at 7.20. And then at 7.30. And then at 7.45. And then at 8 to get me up at 8. Right? But, like, I'm not even hearing these alarms go off. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just not hearing them. And then once I do get to that point and I go, oh, shit, it's 8.30, my body won't get up. And, and then my eyes won't open. So it's like I'm conscious, I can hear the things going on around me, but I just can't open my eyes or wake up. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. It's this really intense, deep sleep. Um, and I don't know what's, uh, to be honest, like what's called, causing it. So I'm trying to be as productive as I can during the times that I have uh, without neglecting m my physical mental health needs, you know, like taking a break when I need to take a break, uh, watching an episode or two of, uh, 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 of Star Trek when I need to watch an episode or two of Star Trek, going for a walk, doing some exercises, moving around a little bit, um, you know, eating properly. <laughs> That's also a thing that needs to be done. Um, and I am doing those things and I am putting in the hours that I feel like I need to put in. But it but that but the sleeping thing has really been the biggest challenge. It's just getting up in the morning like it the last couple of days have been a, a far more difficult than uh, any other point in the last two or three months since this pandemic situation started. Um, and, and, it, and it probably has something to do with stress. Uh, which leads us into point number two, which is talking about the mental health state that I'm in. Um, generally, I'm doing pretty good, but I do think that I'm a little bit more stressed out uh, because I want to achieve a lot of different things, uh, because I want to create a lot of different content, um, content that when the idea comes in and I figure out the structure and the methodology of uh, executing that plan and what I want to talk about and how I'm going to talk about it and this new thing that I, you know, that I'm excited to, to do, uh, what ends up happening is I'm not focused on it. I think that's kind of been the issue. There might be a focus issue. Um, so I end up getting scatterbrained uh, every morning, right? And I'm not able to like concentrate on the task at hand. Like today, you know, it's Wednesday. Uh, usually I would wake up um, and make a little coffee, eat, drink, drink coffee, eat breakfast, and get working on the video, which is looking up the stories and historical events um, or uh, general strike stuff that I want to particularly talk about. Take my notes and then uh, eat a little snack, make the video, 
uh, convert the video into a, a, a smaller file so that it doesn't take forever to upload. Clip it out, and in the, as I'm doing that, I would eat lunch. And then I would work on, uh, like, either I would go for a walk or do some exercises, and then I would work on, like, uh, get the podcast for tomorrow, the, the, the dispatch that would go out for tomorrow. And, and then, you know, I would sit and be in the chats with you folks um, and eat dinner. That's, just, that's kind of what I'm doing. A little, little peek behind the curtain is I'm usually eating dinner when I'm in the chats with you guys. Uh, or, or I'm kind of intermittently doing some exercises here and there. And, uh, and then I would continue writing till I get tired and go to bed. But that's kind of not what's been happening. I've been kind of waking up and just being very scatterbrained about... Um, oh, but I got to do this podcast, you know, because I'm doing these these small business series on Taboo Table Talk that I'll get into a little bit more detail about. Uh, it's like, oh, I got to do this podcast. Oh, I have this writing thing to do. Oh, I should do, what am I going to do for this daily video? Oh, what what about Forkful? How am I going to do the stand-up thing? What about these drawings that I want to get done? What about, the, and, and then I kind of, and then I'm just like, I don't, I have no idea where to start. And so that's kind of been a little bit of a challenge in terms of that is I think I have all of these projects that I want to do that I like doing that I'm excited about doing um, that. And it seems like you guys are excited about them as as well from from the, the feedback and the reactions that I'm getting is that you guys enjoy them as well, which is cool, which is awesome. And uh, like keep fucking telling me how you guys like if you guys are just like, hey, this is. Not something we're even interested in. Uh, cool, awesome. Okay, that's good for me to know in terms of like, okay, I guess I'm the only one that kind of finds this thing entertaining. Uh, and that's fine. <laughs> um, but I want to be able to concentrate a little bit more on what I need to do. So so I've been very scatterbrained. I've got a lot of irons in the fire. And, you know, like I said, it takes action to make those irons into something into a sword or a piece of armor or a helmet or a pot or whatever it is, right? So um, I've been trying to make sure that I, you know, take a minute in the morning to when my head goes into that direction to just kind of slow myself down to say, okay, this compartment of time doesn't need to involve all of these tasks. And breaking that, take, taking a moment to kind of break all of my tasks into compartments. Um, and kind of, you know, if I need to be adaptable with it, I can be adaptable with it. Uh, but just knowing that one compartment of time can, needs to only be relegated to one particular task at a time. Uh, rather than all of it being, you know, uh, being put into one thing. And, that, and, and that's tough because it is kind of going back to the basics of how I used to deal with getting panic attacks when I was in high school and college because uh, I didn't really know how to deal with them. I just would like panic and just be like, and, I, I, and then kind of just have to shut down and then I would feel bad about myself for like shutting down and not being able to take breaks. I still kind of get shitty about taking breaks, by the way. Like I still get super shitty about like taking 10 minutes to just go and be outside or you know go and take a walk down the steps or whatever it is like I still get kind of shitty about it like I'm not really doing anything it's like no you are doing something like recreation is important like mindfulness and being present and giving your body a little rejuvenation giving your mind a little rejuvenation is doing something don't be a fucking idiot right like that's kind of (laughs) the the internal monologue don't call yourself an idiot Uh, but that's the internal monologue that goes into my head and, uh, you know, so I've kind of been dealing with these, with these little, little, just these little jolts of panic, just these little jolts of anxiety that just pop up and it's like, bah, okay, you know, take a breath and let's compartmentalize. Um, it's easier said than done. I, uh, fully understand that it is easier said than done. Um, but I, th- I think, you know, it's something that I need to do and I need to be better at practicing. Um, part of it also is we are approaching this time where, you know, it's going to almost be half a year 
that we are going to be well it's not there yet we're we're approaching the second full month that we're going to be in this stay at home quarantine pandemic situation um and part of me is getting nervous because you know i've always been able to pay my bills properly uh through touring but that's because i'm you know like if i have if if a month is 30 days between 15 and 22 days i'm on the road and i'm doing shows uh at least 20 of those days right so that means that i'm making enough money to cover my bills uh put gas in the tank put food on the table and uh, take care of hosting fees for the podcasts that I put up, hosting fees for my website. Um, now it's like the Zoom shows need hosting fees, right? Um, and now we're getting to that point where, yes, I'm, I'm in a lucky enough situation where my car payments have been deferred for a little while. Uh, I don't have rent to worry about. Um, f- I'm, I'm okay on food right now because I'm staying with my parents through all this um, so I'm in a lucky enough situation where there are things that I don't have to worry about, but I feel like eventually I'm going to have to start worrying about them. And this residual that I've built up, um, is not going to be a residual anymore. So that's kind of developed a little bit of panic. Um, and usually it doesn't pop up, but it will pop up during that, that when I wake up in the morning and I, you know, start thinking about like how to operate my day and that little irksome panic will pop in. And it's ner- it's it's scary and it's nerve wracking. And I will say that the positive aspect of this is that there have been a lot more people that I mean, the, the second that I said I lost tour dates, I had an overwhelming amount of support coming in from a ton of people like fans that have uh, come to see me a couple different times and we've kept in touch intermittently. Uh, a bunch of people like joined my Patreon. Uh, old friends that I haven't talked to in a couple of years joined my Patreon, which is super fucking cool. Um, old teachers, um, they started supporting my stuff uh, a, a little bit more than they already have, like which is fucking awesome, right? Um, and I... Like you have, you have no idea how much I appreciate that because I was genuinely concerned. Like I am fucked for a while, uh, and thinking on that, like whenever this thought pops up and I get into these little minor panic attacks, like thinking about that makes it a lot easier to deal with and a lot easier to contend with. To sit there and say yes, the future is questionable, but that's kind of the point. Um. That's kind of the point. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. And we have to, we, we can't predict the future. If we could, then it wouldn't be the future, right? It would, we, and, and so we, we have to be adaptable. We have to learn how to do better things. So that's, you know, that's kind of the thing that I've, um, I've been trying to do is how do I adapt? Okay, I can't go on the road. I can't you know, do as, as, as many shows as I normally did, but maybe I can channel that energy into these virtual shows. Maybe I can channel that energy into doing these videos that I've been doing. Maybe I can take those videos, extrapolate some of that information and turn it into stand-up like I've always done in the past, right? Let's take a thing that I've done. Um, I find that, you know, like information, history, all that stuff, uh, storytelling, like, and to me, history is an aspect of storytelling. Um, That's all like ripe for for creating comedy out of and creating comedy that to to me is is a force of enlightenment for people is a force of good for people um you know so and and that's what i've wanted to do so for for me personally like that does fulfill that goal of of mine um so those minor panic attacks have kind of been kept at bay and have but i am it is a concern that i have is okay how am i gonna how am i gonna get through july and august uh, when the uh, it, it is is my level of income going to man match or outweigh uh, my level of you know expenses that I have 
Um, and, and this is like basic b fucking bill management or whatever. Whatever. Uh, I've lost the word again. I'm sure some of you will leave a comment about what I'm looking at. Like money management bullshit. Like accounting. Basic accounting. Found the word, you guys. Found the word. Uh, and, you know, again, it's one of those things where when this thing first started... All I said was I lost gigs. I don't know what I'm going to do. It'd be cool if you guys could help. I'm going to shift my focus into the digital realm. Um, nobody has to pay for it, but if you want to donate to it, you totally fucking can. Uh, and you guys totally fucking did. And you came through in, in, in a way that I never thought anybody would. Like the generosity that I saw and experienced and felt was incredible. Um, so, you know, I have hope that things will, uh, will get better and I have hope that, you know, people will take care of each other, uh, because they have, because they do. That's how we operate. That's, that's always how the, the middle class and the poor class have operated. We've always come through for each other. So I have, I have, um, faith in that and the other way that I kind of break the panic attacks is by listening to music <laughs> that's always been a central focus of mine is I like listening to music I was talking to a friend of mine about like how I sit in the car and one of the things I do with these drives is like that's my zen by the way um, is being in a car driving and just blaring my music as loud as possible is is my zen. I used to do that in college all the time when I was like pining after girls, right? Like, oh my God, this girl doesn't like me. And I have, and it's just like, did you tell her? Did you talk to her? It's like, no, I kind of like think that like if it happens, then it's just like, it's like supposed to like organically happen. Cause you know, I have this, this, uh, diluted thought of what love. And it's just like, anyway, but the point is that's how I would kind of find my zen. I would find my, 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 um, my center and calm myself down and start thinking realistically and being like, yeah, you haven't fucking talked to this girl, you know, like you haven't said anything to this person at all. And you just expect them to be in love with you. That's ridiculous. Like either go talk to them or stop being, you know, this fucking whiny idiot. But, th but that's my Zen spot. That's why I loved, that's part of the reason I think I really like, I, like I don't mind the drives that I make is because it like, Gives me some time to think and run run things in my brain and organize my thoughts and stuff. Um, so this is what I do, and I listen to music when I do it, and I blare it very loudly, and I jam the fuck out in my car. I sing really loud, uh, and sometimes loud enough that I hurt my throat. That's happened a couple times. <laughs> you know, you you kind of listen to that Taking Back Sunday, and you and you try to match the pitch of Adam Lozera's voice and uh and and then you hurt yourself a little bit and you have to sit down and be quiet for <laughs> for just a few hours till your vocal cords are like you're not Adam Lazara you 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 can't hit those notes <laughs> um so you know and, and I will say too is leading to the next point is my physical health has been important. Like last week I did not exercise at all and I felt terrible. Uh like genuinely not awesome. And I thought I was come I thought I was like getting sick. Uh which I don't think I am. I think my allergies are acting up. Uh I think the temperature going up and down is creating like stuffiness is making me a lot stuffier and this apartment itself gets very dry. It gets very hot very quickly. Uh, so I'm just in like the stuffy environment, which is making my sinuses act up that way. Um, but I didn't feel great. I kind of felt sluggish and like I felt, I don't know. I just, I didn't feel particularly awesome. So I've, I've gotten back to exercising this week, uh, which, and I feel, and it like, Im like immediate, like it was like an immediate thing, um, where like I felt fucking way better. <laughs> <laughs> um, I felt like incredibly better just by sitting down and exercising a little bit. So, um, I've gotten, I've gotten back into it. Um, uh, you know, just doing some dumbbell stuff, just doing some body weight stuff. I have my exercise ball. If you caught the video yesterday where I took you guys a little tour of the room, I have my exercise ball, my yoga mat, 
So I'm doing some stretches. I'm doing some body weight stuff. Um, and I watched this guy on YouTube that uh, a friend of mine in Norfolk, uh, Vikram, shout out to Vikram. He, he sent me this guy, Jeff something. It's like Athlean X is the thing. But he's got like, there. It's it, I used to be super into working out in college. And uh, I used to watch like a bunch of workout stuff all the time about like new forms and all this stuff. Um, and uh, this guy's like pretty solid, man. Like he's got some really good advice. He shows you how to do these exercises properly, what the science behind it is, what it's actually doing on your muscles, and like how to build muscle and um, how you should go about doing that. So, yeah, so I watch a bunch of his stuff, and some of those workouts are fucking intense. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of them are just like, hey, you can blast your abs in seven minutes. Here you, here we go, seven straight minutes. And then by the end of it, you're like, I think I'm going to die now. Uh, you know, like, it's just that intense. Uh, and sometimes I pop them on and, and do the workouts because uh, I got, you know, my computer hooked up to the TV and, um, and stuff like that. So uh, it's cool. It's fun. Like, I'm... I'm like I'm getting back into just doing these exercises regularly and it's and it's cool and I and I was you know doing some stretches here and there when I was touring around I would do my stretches I would do some yoga um not a lot maybe 10 or 15 minutes you know just because when when I'm on a time crunch it makes it a lot difficult to really dedicate the time to 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 do the exercises like when I work out in my room it's a solid hour hour and 15 minutes um and then I shower eat and all that all that good stuff so yeah, and, and what's cool is I've been doing, so I, I used to go to my parents' gym in the basement, um, which is great, and it definitely helps, but, uh, you know, the gym's closed, but I was going there in December uh, when, I, when, you know, this divorce thing started, and I was staying with them, um, which I was, like, not intending on staying with them this long, uh, but uh, I was going out of the gym a bunch, three or four times a week and doing like these hour two hour workouts and stuff and uh and like I've gained 20 pounds since December some of it is because I'm getting a little I'm getting a little a little budgy in the in the gut area which I believe I was warned about uh Lee Camp and Sam Sachs uh a, a, like a year or two ago were like hey I it seems everything's fine now, but eventually, like, you're going to get to that point where just, like, just the center mass, you're just going to get a little pudge right about here, and the rest of you will stay the same. <laughs> and it's happening, you guys. They're like soothsayers. They fucking got it. Like, just this little pudgy area in the center of my body is gay. <laughs> the rest of me is still, like, lanky as fuck. Like... <laughs> But I, I, it's this is like the heaviest I've been, uh, like ever. I'm like 140 pounds right now, uh, and I've never been able to hit that weight. My goal weight in college for working out was to gain enough, like to be at 140. That was my goal weight in college, and it took me a decade to reach that. You guys. <laughs> uh, so you know, I, I am, I am doing, I'm doing a lot better with the exercising stuff. Today might be, today might be a day off day, or if it's nice enough, I might pop out for a walk uh, later in the evening, just to kind of walk around a little bit uh, and do a little cardio stuff. But uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I need to, I need to get rid of that little pudgy. Uh, you know, I got That's what I want to do. I want to get rid of the little, little, little stomach punch that I'm getting. Uh, because <laughs> it's just like, why is it here? <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway, but um, so I do want to talk about the status of these daily videos as well because I am a little conflicted about them. When I first started doing these, I started doing these because uh, one, I needed a creative outlet. And, and I wanted to like talk about important things that I know that mainstream media is not going to talk about because really what happens is stuff gets stuck in my head. And if I don't have a way to get them out, then I just, I, it, it, it all gets jammed up in there and then I like explode. Like there's too much going on in my brain that I haven't got out and put either onto a piece of paper slash computer 
uh, or into some kind of a creative outlet and it just buzzes around and, uh, and, and I think it causes me to like fucking panic and short out and get angry. It's not great. So I've always wanted to create stuff. Uh, I've always found a creative channel of figuring out how to take the information that I have learned to share it with everybody. I think it's this urge to just like share things with people. Like it's just like I, I don't want to be the only person that knows this shit, right? Like I think everybody should know what what this is all, amazing. Um, you know, so um, that I think that's probably where that comes from. Uh, so that's part of it is learning something cool, learning something exciting and sharing it with you guys and hopefully adding um, enough of an interesting spin with comedy and storytelling and w what have you to to make it interesting that uh, that you guys enjoy it. And you guys seem to enjoy it. Uh, I hope you guys seem to enjoy it. Um, I hope nobody's been like lying to me to be like, surprise, motherfucker, we hate you. Like, that would be so mean. Oh, my God, you guys. Um, but, but you guys seem to really enjoy it. And at first I was doing it every single day, right? And I kind of broke it up where uh, I was going live on Sundays. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was just me doing three different stories. And then Friday was like Philosophy Friday. Saturday was Storytelling Saturday. And I kind of had these little little things. And I did them all through April um, up till, what, last week? Where's my calendar at? Let's look at my calendar real quick. Um yeah, I think it was last week. So, like, April 27th was when I, like, didn't uh, do a video. I think April 26th I did a video, and then April 27th to May 2nd I just didn't do videos. I took the week off to lay the foundation for the Citizen Revolution virtual stand-up comedy show, the Fringe Festival show that I did last Saturday, which went really well, Um uh, and make sure that I'm just keeping up on my writing. And I gotta say, guys, I did not hit all of my goals by doing that. I, I still fell short on all of the writing that I wanted to do. Um, which is a bummer, but again, it's like I gotta be a little flexible about it. But, you know, so what is that? Uh, let's, let, me, let, me, let me look at the, the weeks that I've been doing this. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six... You know, so essentially six straight weeks of that. And, and at some point in that six weeks, I decided that Thursdays were going to be my day off to focus on a lot more writing, which it did help uh, genuinely to do that, to, to, to get caught up on, um, on writing. And uh, I, I didn't hit my goal last week. I got a bunch of writing done for the Citizen Revolution, bunch of writing done for the Fringe Festival show. Not a lot of writing done for um, Forkful of Noodles, unfortunately. So I am kind of at a crossroads of how to approach this. On, on one regard, I want to do these videos where I talk about stories and things of that sort. Um, but doing them every day seems like it is a challenge of time and energy. Because here's the thing, it takes me a few hours to do the research every morning, do my notes, and then sit down and doing the video is between an hour and an hour and a half, depending on the topic and story that I'm covering. After that, I convert the video, I edit the videos, I upload the videos, and I sit in the chats with you guys as well. That's virtually the day, guys. Like, that's literally from, like, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. is dedicated just to those videos every single day. Um, I've, I enjoy doing them. I really do. I, I love doing them. I, would, I mean, I wouldn't fucking do them if I didn't, right? My, my concern is, since it's such a time constraint on a daily basis, um, do I reduce the amount of days that I do them? Which means... Uh, what will probably end up giving up is Storytelling Saturday uh, and Philosophy Friday sometimes. So that's kind of where I'm at, is how do I want to go about doing it because I have a bunch of stuff on my plate and I want to make sure that I'm not 
you know, overwhelming myself that I go back to having that scattered moment. Uh, it might be reducing the amount of, uh, amount of videos I put out. So I might not be able to put out videos on a regular basis like I have been. Um, I might have to relegate it to Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then take the rest of the week to work on other projects. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, what what would be the what what would be cool for you guys? Like how how often do you guys think that doing these videos would be ideal? Doing these videos would be beneficial? Like uh, because there are some people that have that do complain that it's just like it's hard to keep up with the shit that you do man like i wouldn't i want to keep up with all the stuff but there's just so much that you're doing and i totally get that and i totally feel that too um is sometimes i look at myself and i go oh man i'm doing so much shit i gotta slow my ass down a little bit uh so if if we do go in that direction i feel like maybe having doing it like because I'm doing the Citizen Revolution shows on Fridays, and I think I'll probably have to concentrate on that quite a bit, I'm doing two Taboo Table Talk episodes every single week, and I'm going to have to concentrate on that a little bit, and I'm trying to get these forkfuls out, and I want to concentrate on that a little bit more. As much as I've really enjoyed for the last six, seven weeks of doing these videos every single day, I don't know if that's feasible anymore. Um... Maybe the answer is this. Maybe the answer is doing the format that I've been doing with these videos, as you've seen them, with three, four stories uh, talking about a, you know, a, uh, uh, a labor movement, a strike, a historical thing that happened that we get to learn about, that I get to learn and share with you guys, you know. We talk about a current event story. We talk about something else that's going on. Something that, cor you know, corporate media is not really going to talk about. Um, ideas, philosophy, that sort of stuff. We do that, right? But we do that Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We leave it for those three days. And then along the week, if there is something that I feel is particularly, um, particularly needs to, to, to be addressed, I could do short videos and bring put those out under the same banner of road reflections. What about that? That's not a bad idea. I just works up some shit right here. <laughs> I, I I don't think I've been like racking my brain about what to do about this. Like I'm really really like genuinely concerned. Like I I really like doing this stuff. Um, I, I like doing these videos. I like doing the research. It's fun. It's exciting. Like, and then I get to share it with you guys and then you guys leave comments and react to it. And that's super fun for me to see too. And then like you guys add ideas and shit to it, which is fucking awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I think, I think moving forward, starting this week. So on Friday, you probably won't see a video. Uh, I think what we're going to do is Saturday. Sunday and Monday, we'll do these videos. We'll do the uh, hanging out in the evening um, where I'm in the chats with you guys, right? And we'll cover up some ideas, some strikes, labor movement stuff, history stuff, philosophy stuff. And, uh, and we'll do those those three days. I'm going to focus on Forkful. I'm going to focus on Citizen Revolution. And I'm going to focus on uh, the dispatches that come out every Friday on the YouTubes. Uh, the dispatches are part of Taboo Table Talk. I'll talk about that in a minute. That's the next, uh, almost. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that's going to be, that's going to clear things up for me enough that I think, um, I think I won't feel so bad about abandoning some of these projects that I've got going on that I've been doing fucking forkful of noodles have been doing since 2013 you guys and i have not been able to put anything up since the end of february and that feels really fucking lame to me uh taboo table talk has been going since you know 2016 i've been doing dispatches since 2017 i think 2017 2018 um so i want to i want to make sure that i dedicate enough time to all these projects because 
I love doing them. They're fun. I don't do things that I don't enjoy doing. That's uh, just this part of my brain. So, and then, you know, between Tuesday and Friday, if there's anything that pops up, like, you know, let's say something happens with Julian Assange and it's like breaking news. We got to fucking talk about it. We got to break it down. I'll get, I'll do my notes and then I'll get on the video and I'll make the video very quickly and upload it. And that way there's less editing and things like that for me to do. Um, and I, and then I can just jump back into doing writing and research and things of that sort. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, so that is, that, that, that is, I think going to be the plan going forward. Thank you for helping me work that out in my brain, you guys. <laughs> Had I not done this video today, I would not have figured it out. Okay. So the next thing on our list is Kapow, the Citizen Revolution comedy show. It's a live virtual comedy show with with me, Chris Mohan. Uh, I drew that. I drew that. I drew that illustration. I made the poster. I do. Uh, my background is in graphic design, guys. So this this sort of stuff is like me using my, you know, that that piece of paper I paid a lot of money for. <laughs> um. But the first one is on Friday, May 8th. Have you got your tickets? You should get your tickets. You should uh, come hang out. It's going to be a super fun time. Uh, I, you know, and basically here's what I'm doing with the show. I did a test show on April 25th. It went fucking amazing. It went, I honestly like didn't know what to expect from it. Uh, and I was fully going in there to be like, this could fail. This could just fucking fall apart. This could just explode and like, and no, like nothing could come out of it. Right, and then I would just go back to trying to figure out what the next thing is. Okay, but it went spectacular. Uh, the May second show, same thing. I went to the Fringe Festival show to be like, this could fail. This could be fucking terrible, and even that went really well. And I made um, I made these drawings uh, to add a little bit of like extra interactive um, things to it. Like I made I made these little drawings that I'm really proud of. I don't know if you've seen them, but like I made that. I'm gonna pull that back so that it's not so blurry, um, you know. And I'm like really, really proud of these drawings that I made. Uh, and uh, and they all involve like these stories that I'm telling, and they went really fucking well. They went super, super fucking well. So now I'm like, cool. So that's an interactive element. That's a dynamic element that I can add these illustrations, these drawings that I can make. And now I get to d use that creative outlet as well. So, so the citizen revolution comedy show is going to involve that. There are going to be drawings. There are going to be videos. Uh, we're going to talk about some current event news, news stories. We're going to talk about, um, we're also going to obviously talk about big ideas. There's some consistent elements that are going to be present through every single show kind of, I guess, like anchor, anchor bits, so to speak, right? But a lot of it is sort of interchangeable because a lot of it is talking about where we are currently and what we are doing, um, you know, it, it, in, in, our, in our current zeitgeist around the pandemic, right? To kind of alleviate this thing and like what we can do as citizens to create positive change. That's gonna be the whole point of this thing. We, and then we're, there's gonna be dick jokes. There we're, we're, there's gonna be dick jokes, you guys. Um, so, and this is sort of, the Citizen Revolution comedy shows are going to be the way that I'm going to have to, um, try to make some income doing stand-up, uh, you know, kind of try to buffer out the, the, the income that I would lose from doing, uh, doing my live stand-up comedy shows. So if you had planned on coming to see me do my live stand-up comedy, um, and you can't because I'm off the road and I might be off the road. Till like September, maybe I don't know. Uh, this is your chance to fucking check out something cool, check out something different, uh, and uh, you know. So uh, the spots are going to be limited. Um, I'm going to be doing them pretty much every Friday. May eighth is the first one. May twenty second, um, June fifth, June twelfth, June nineteenth. Every Friday in June, uh, take a break for Fourth of July and come back in in July and do them, uh, you know, Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern. So that would be 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, so yeah, there you go. You should, you should totally grab a ticket, come hang out. Tickets are five bucks minimum. 
Um, you, if you if you have the means to and you want to, you can donate a little bit more. But uh, because the spots are limited because of the way Zoom works, uh, and I don't want it to like overload the server or whatever. Um, if you have multiple people in your house that want to come check out the show, just get one ticket, and you can. If you feel like you have to, you can donate more, but you really don't have to. Like that 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 five bucks is is. Um, I don't want to price anybody out. That's basically it. I don't want to price anybody out. Uh, sustaining members are going to get a free ticket to every single show. Um, the people that attended the test get a free one to the May 8th show, and then everybody that attends the May 8th show gets an opportunity for a free ticket for the May 22nd show. I am trying to figure out how to make this packaging thing work. Like, I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> I use brown paper tickets. And I'm trying to figure it out, but I don't know how to make that happen yet. So, um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. So it is a lot of work. I wrote the foundation stuff uh, last night. I'm going to work on some more of that tonight. Uh, I actually found the two, two, two like rotating segments that I want to do. And I know what, um, what historical strike I want to talk about um, in this in this in this particular uh, show, um, so that's the other thing too, right? So if you come to the May eighth show and you want to come back to the May twenty second show, things are going to be different. There's going to be a bunch of different stuff in it, and at, because it's a stand, because it's also stand up, the material is going to grow. It's going to get better. So even when you hear the same jokes, they are probably going to be framed differently. They're going to sound a little bit different. There might be additional jokes here and there. So it's going to evolve. It's going to change. Um, and this will essentially be the foundation of what I will end up talking about in my live stand-up comedy show when I get back to touring. So uh, there you go. So you guys are you guys are uh, helping me do that. And uh, yeah, so the tickets um, are available for that. Uh, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to keep putting links in the comment section um, as we go along. I'm gonna try to do my best about that. But, um, yeah, the, right now for the May 8th show, there are 10 spots left. Um, for the May 22nd show, we haven't really sold tickets for that yet. I haven't really pushed the link all that much. I want to get this May 8th show done. Um, what was that? What's I going to say after that? Oh, if you're in financially precarious times, uh, please let me know and I will get you a ticket uh, for either of the shows. I'll give you a code, and it's important to go through this ticket link, and let me explain why. It's important to go through the ticket link because there is something called Zoom bombing. I believe I talked about it like a month ago. Um, basically, uh, it's just people that are coming in and acting a fool. You know, they're throwing up bullshit propaganda, you know, racist, misogynist, alt-righty things. And they're disrupting the show. They make it less fun for everybody. And the reason why they're able to do that is because it's an open public Zoom link. Uh, people are posting open public Zoom links and it's easier for them to get through the encryption because Zoom claims that they had end-to-end -end encryption, but they don't. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So the ticket link is providing an extra level of security. So you have to get the ticket link, then there's a password. So you have to get the meeting ID, and the password in order to attend. So there's two layers of security to ensure that we don't get these unwanted guests. Uh, so once again, kapow, citizen revolution. Um, I hope I hope some of you guys can make it to that. I'm really excited about it. I'm super, super fucking excited about it. I'm gonna be working on some of the material. I'm gonna be working on some of these drawings uh, and 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 doing, do, do, doing some stuff that way, uh, which is exciting. So yeah. So, on to the other couple projects that I got going on. Um, I want to talk about Taboo Table Talk because I have a couple interviews scheduled, uh, a couple multi-part interviews, actually, that'll be two-parters. And uh, I, have, I have some really awesome interviews coming up. I'm scheduling more. I got to reach out to some folks uh, that I want to, like, try to get on the show. And hopefully they will agree to get on the show. I don't know. But we'll see. Uh... And then usual dispatches that are coming out every single week. Um, I'll be doing some, you know, more of those. I'm going to be working on that today. Uh, 
But I'm doing this special project with it. So I've ramped up Taboo Table Talk a little bit. I've ramped it up. And the way that I've ramped it up is this. I am talking to small businesses. I'm talking to small venues, small business venues, small business owners, whether you're a coffee shop, a cleaning person, a HVAC person, you own an independent comedy club, you own a listening room, you own a rock club, you own a DIY space. I am talking to these people to find out what's going on with them during this pandemic so that we get an accurate story um, about what the what small businesses are doing, what sole proprietorship looks like, what real entrepreneurship looks like. Not this billionaire entrepreneurship bullshit. What real entrepreneurship looks like, right? What are, what are these people that own these establishments, these tiny little coffee shops that aren't these massive giant corporate franchises that, that serve the community, that help people in the neighborhood? How are they coping with this situation? Did they get any help? Uh, what can we as people, what can we as, as citizens do to... Um, help these individuals so every wednesday um i am talking to uh i'm releasing conversations that i've had with a couple small business owners i'm still doing them i've got 11 so far uh i would love it if uh, i got some more so if you know of anybody that would be interested please let them know and have them contact me because i would love to talk to them um, i've got a couple other people that i need to reach out to uh, and I'm going to attempt to do that tonight or tomorrow. That's, that's basically where I'm at. Either tonight or tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down and send out a bunch of emails and um, messages and things of that sort. So um, between today and tomorrow, I'm scheduling a, uh, a lot more, and I'm going to keep doing them until I run out, essentially. So every Wednesday, every Wednesday, I will have um, a... Uh, a, a interview with with a, with multiple small businesses and it's the, these aren't long interviews they're kind of shorter interviews they're kind of snippets and and uh features uh so anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes depending on who i'm talking to so that's happening so i've kind of ramped up my work for taboo table talk a little bit more uh, and this is the uh, this is the part that i'm uh really struggling at which is how do i get my fork full of noodles back <laughs> Uh, that involves a lot of production work is what it's seeming like. The research is a lot more in depth and a lot more heavy. And it's led me to slow down a lot more. I was putting them out pretty consistently in the beginning of the year up till February. I went on the road and I started working on this piece about the Black Panthers and, uh, and I went into this real deep dive. And I have like a shit ton of notes. Um, and I have, a, I have a script started, but it's nowhere near finished. It'll probably end up being like a seven part episode about the Black Panthers, maybe five to seven. Um, and then I started looking at something for Dem Exit and third parties and creating a new party in America because the election's coming up. Uh, and I've been working on that too, simultaneously. And then I started doing some research on the Fed and uh, the the current state of the economy. Uh, and I started doing research on that too. Uh, and I haven't started writing that one yet. So those are the irons in the fire for Fork Full of Noodles. Here's the thing with Fork Full of Noodles. Uh, there's images involved, there's screen caps involved of articles and references and sources that I use. Uh, I also use video clips. Um, so that people can have an understanding of what was said in certain contexts. Like if there was a, if it's like a clip from an interview, if it's a clip from a documentary, if it's a clip from whatever, uh, and I use that as a source. So the production aspect of things is, is a little bit higher than the show itself um, because of all of these things involved. The recording ends up taking a lot longer. The editing takes a, a lot longer because it's scripted, right? So I'm trying to get the script right and the jokes right, and then uh, editing it down. So all of that, you know, went, once I finish writing and compiling all of my sources and all of my video clips, just the editing process takes like a solid three or four hours for me. Um, so 
that's part of the reason why it's taking so long cause, and, and the and the research itself has been so in depth like i still have to do so much more research I, you know i have all these tabs open here i'll just show you guys let's go to this so this is what's going on for the dem exit piece this is the script that i've started writing right now and so far i mean this is just rough stuff it's three pages at 14 point font uh it has to be 14 point font because my eyes I'm getting old, you guys. Uh, but I have all of this stuff open. A uh, little intro, some about the wig party. Uh, I have a couple of YouTube interviews uh, that I don't want to pull up because it'll it'll start playing the clip and get very loud. Um, a couple of articles about structural fraud in elections. Uh, stuff about Eugene Debs, seeing if if maybe this is this is a direction to go. Uh, I've talked about ranked choice voting, and uh, what, this is an article against that to see what the other side is saying. Um, so I've got all these articles pulled up, and I've already got a script started. Now, uh, that's one of the pieces that I'm working on. Uh, and you can see all those tabs that I've got open. And then what I do is I watch them, and then I'll take notes on them, and then I look through my notes, compile it, and then write based on that information that I've gathered. Uh, so it's, it's quite a bit of work, uh, and uh, as you might know, I don't have a staff to do any of this stuff, so it's just me kind of doing all this stuff on my own. Um, I, I would I, Basically, like, if you become a sustaining member, if, if more people become sustaining members, I will be able to afford a video editor, um, and that will, that will save me an immense amount of time, like an immense amount of time, because I can just take all of this stuff, I can get uh, all of the clips... Uh, you know, export it out or talk to them about how they would want that stuff delivered and just send them all the files and get all that files back within, you know, a day or two of me getting all that stuff set up for them. So, and, you know, I can work out the script in a particular way. So I would essentially have like a employee that I can play, that I can pay per script and per video based on what I'm getting on monthly donations on sustaining memberships so there there is a level where you know if i get a certain amount i can uh justify having uh someone that i can pay to to help do this thing so so that's one let me see if i can pull up the other one okay so this is the other one this is the the black panther piece and so far i've i've got one part worked out i've got 10 pages on this at 14 point font oh boy what happened there Oh, why did that do that? Okay, sorry. Uh, so that's all the 10 pages that I've got so far. So you can see this is this is what I do whenever I uh, know I'm getting a, a new video. I'm going to delete that so that it's because the font got bigger. Uh, and uh, so it's still 10 pages. It's still pretty much 10 pages. And check this out. Up top, I've got all of these articles here. Uh, there's one about... I'll oh, close that out. Uh, there's one about the food pantry, the, the 50 years of, of Black Panther free breakfast, uh, the prisons. Oh, boy. Oh. Ah. See? See these videos pop up and they start playing and it's annoying. Um, the Gray Zone has an article about, uh, you know, the FBI. Uh, I've got a bunch of these. All these up here, all of these ones that are glowing, they're all documentaries that are like, an hour or so long. Some of them are like two hours long. Uh, this is the ten point program that I that I had to take notes on, to, and, and one of the pieces is breaking down the ten point program and how it's still applicable. So working on all of that. So again, all that is part of the the, the ten pages I've got so far, and I've got <coughs> a lot more to work on for this piece as well. So uh, that's all the work that I do for Forkful of Noodles. It's pretty crazy. Uh, that's why it's taking me a little bit uh, of time, because um, the Black Panther piece, like I have got all my notes compiled. I just have to organize the notes in a particular manner that makes sense for me to be able to release, uh, to to write the script, video, get all my clips, get all my images, and go from there. Okay, this is turning out to be a lot longer of a check-in than I thought, uh, but that's fine. Uh, I hope you guys are still hanging in there and doing okay. So the other thing is stories from the road. 
Uh, that used to be the series that I was doing on my email list, but right now I've kind of been focusing on the email list to be promoting other people that kind of need help, promoting people that you should support either by subscribing to their channel, by uh, checking out their website and subscribing to that, or becoming a member of their Patreon and stuff, um, or purchasing their shit, whatever, whatever way that you want to support these cats that I think are awesome and are people that you should know. Uh, and are people that you probably are never not, not going to see on uh, uh, Comedy Central or Netflix or anything because they don't toe that corporate line of being soft enough or anything. Um, these are like these are like true DIY artists. So I've been promoting them a whole lot and promoting these videos that I've been working on and the Citizen Revolution comedy show that I've been working on. So I haven't really done stories from the road for the last two, two, three months. But I did that storytelling show for the Pittsburgh Fringe, and which went great, which is where those illustrations are from. Um, so my thought went to a couple different avenues. And this might be a project that is sporadic. I don't really have a... Um, like it doesn't fit into a weekly plan. It's kind of going to be a little bit of a sporadic project. Uh, I might put up some of these stories that I wrote for that fringe show up on my website as written pieces that you can read. Uh, I did that for one of the instances where a guy got mad at, you know, me talking about India in general. Um, and he was like a lefty Indian person. I posted that on my website. If you want to go check that out. I'll try to post the link to this. I'll, I'll, I'll have to write links to post. Um, anyway, I might do that. I might do a possible album. Storytelling album. I might set it up as a Zoom show. Or a couple different Zoom shows. I don't know. Um, but I've got a bunch of these stories that I really enjoy telling. That I've told on the road before once or twice they're not like I don't know I, they're they're not particularly like stand-up-esque stories they're just kind of tour stories so I tell them whenever like I have a smaller crowd or a crowd gets really uncomfortable at the fact that I'm this anti-establishment socialist comedian that's going to criticize both sides you know like they can and then they're just like man this is getting intense and it's like yep okay fine and then I switch over and I do the stories um, so there might be a possible possibility that I can do that or or what I might end up doing is um, using my microphone and the recorder that I have writing out the script and um, doing a just just a reading and releasing the album that way. So it's just sort of me talking in a room uh, similar to this and uh, and if I if I end up being able to, I might be able to hire a musician or two, pay them some money, and have them add like a backing soundtrack to it and find a mixer. So this would be a little bit more of an involved project if I, de if I decide to take it into a like Stories from the Road with a soundtrack um, because I have incredibly talented musician friends. And I don't want to just like utilize them to make this and not be able to pay them. Like I would want to be able to pay them something. So I would have to figure out what the best way to work that out is. Um, so that's something that I've got kicking around in the back of my head. But in the meantime, I might just end up making them posts on the website, which is what I was doing anyway. Like I would write them for the email list every month. And then a couple, a week or two later, I would post them up on the website. Um, so you know, I might kind of continue to do that trend a little bit. I've got three other stories that I told on Saturday. So I might release them inter inter intermittently on the website, tell one or two other stories that I've got. So, uh, the, the, the last couple things I want to talk about, one is my album. Politely Angry is coming out June 1st. I have it all queued up, ready to rock and roll. And here's the work that I need to do for that. I have to do the bonus disc that is only going to be available on my Bandcamp page. It's the only place it's available. Uh, the bonus disc is going to be the material 
from Politely Angry. Like, the the finished album, but the bonus disc is going to be, like, uh, alternative versions of the bits where maybe there, you know, I had a heckler in the crowd or somebody reacted a certain way or um, I deviated from the story in a particular manner or something along those lines. So they're just kind of alternative versions of the of the bits themselves, like to kind of add a little bit more fun and uh, to kind of show like why live entertainment is um, as exciting as it is. Um, so I'm doing that. Plus on Bandcamp and only on Bandcamp, Will you get bonus tracks on the actual album itself? Uh, so uh, there is that incentive to go to Bandcamp. Plus on Bandcamp, you can get the album for free. I'm going to release it as pay what you want. Um, so if you're in a particularly precarious financial situation and you still want to enjoy the album, you totally fucking can. Because I'm going to release it as pay what you want. Uh, if you'd rather stream it on a Pandora station, you can totally do that as well because it's going to be available there as well. Um, so I'll probably create an event and uh, have you guys pay attention to that event. Uh, and I don't know. I'll figure out something to do the day of uh, the album. I don't, I don't really know. I don't like doing fanfare stuff when I release albums. I just kind of tell people the album's out and I'm like, that's cool. I might just take June 1st to be a day where I tell you guys the album is out and then take that day off, you know, and let you guys enjoy it. And if you want to, you can tweet at me or send me an Instagram thing or post about it or share it with your friends or share it on social, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, just enjoy it. You can do that too. That's fine. So the new album is going to come out June 1st. June 1st. Keep that date in mind. Uh, that's when the new album is going to come out. So I have a month. I'm putting up to putting together this bonus disc. Uh, by the way, if you are a sustaining member, if you're a patron, uh, you get a free copy of it early. You get an early copy of the album by becoming a sustaining member uh, uh, on on either Patreon um, or uh, 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 or directly on my website. Incentives, incentives. Okay. Uh, the last thing is I've been thinking about a book idea um, that that would involve like my stand-up transcripts, how the how I came up with the material, uh, commentary and thoughts on different world events, um, partial biography, and then it would include like my that that would include the road stories, uh, and then add like some forkful scripts. In there, like the ones that are relevant and make sense to add in there. Uh, I don't even know when this would be released, but that's an idea that I've got kicking around in the back of my head. Um, and people, I th there's been a couple of people that have asked me if I would ever write a book, and uh, the answer is yes. It would probably be this, and it would not be in the regular format that other books are in, because I probably also involve like drawings and shit in there. Now that I've like become more excited about doing drawings and utilizing my sketchbooks that I have. Uh, uh, cause I have three sitting on my desk. I have about five or six inside a bucket, uh, in my closet. And my mom just bought me, uh, color pencils and markers, you guys. So big deal, big deal. Very excited. <laughs> um, yeah. And the last thing are the drawings themselves that I want to do. Uh, this is where I took my notes today, but, uh, the drawings that I want to do, I want to keep doing those drawings. And what I might end up doing is, so I do have a t-shirt page. I, I, I do have a t-shirt page. There are some people that have been, yeah, I dropped a fucking pen. Uh, some people that have been asking me for my t-shirts and where they can like purchase t-shirts because people like t-shirts. Fine. Uh, that's fine. It's fine. Um, but uh, <laughs> I have a Teespring page. I will put a link to that in the description. I will put a link to that in the uh, doodly, the comment section, the doodly. Um, but uh, I'm going to take some of these drawings and I'm going to have to work on them a little bit to convert them into t-shirt designs. Like, like one of the ones that I have is this guy here. Like I have to convert the drawing into a t-shirt design that makes sense and not just an illustration. Um, so I do need to do a little bit of work on that because I want to update the t-shirt page. I have a couple of designs right now. I have the Forkful logo, the Taboo Table Talk logo. I have the Knowledge is Power t-shirt, and I have the Duopoly Voting t-shirt as well. 
uh, up on the Teespring page. Uh, there are codes that you can put in to get like major discounts um, because I understand that going through these online sites can can mean that the t-shirts are a little bit more expensive. Um, so I have codes and stuff that you can put in um, to get t-shirts if you want to. And that'll be another way that you can you can support my shit. Uh, so message me if you need a code, by the way. Like if you're like, I want a t-shirt, but it's, you know, $22 and I'll give you a code and you and you can have it for like 10. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'm, I'm totally cool with doing that. Uh, so I'll have more up on that on that site in probably a couple weeks because uh, I'm going to be doing some more drawings and uh, um, I'm excited about them. Some of them might be some some of the drawings that end up into being t-shirts might be drawings that you see in Citizen Revolution shows. Uh, so if you want to be if you want to be super cool, if you want to be that cool kid that that has the that has the that sees the thing before the thing is even released, you know, Citizen Revolution or becoming a sustaining member, you guys. Come on. That's the way you become a cool kid. <laughs> um but I, that's that's all the check-in thing that I have. My eyes don't hurt, so the, I think the cap worked. That's pretty positive. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, wrap this up here and get back to the writing that I got to do today. Uh, uh, this kind of put me in a much better mood than I thought it was gonna the it it, it 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 was going to. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me ramble about the bullshit that I have going on on my plate. And some of the things that I'm going to be changing about um, moving forward. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for, like, seriously, thank you guys for checking it out. And for the people that, like, share this stuff and have made donations, bought CDs, bought T-shirts, uh, become sustaining members. Like, you guys, are, you guys are fucking rock stars, and I really fucking appreciate it. Like, seriously, like, it, from the bottom of my heart, it means a lot. The people that continue to support by tickets, um, yeah, it means it means a lot to 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 have you guys do that. So thank you guys. Keep doing that. I'm gonna keep trying to do the best that I can um, and and bring you guys cool, interesting things uh, to enjoy and and be a part of and be a part of this community. So uh, yeah, I, I there's really no other plugs for me to do. You can donate. You can get a T-shirt follow the band you can follow me on Bandcamp. by the way that's a thing that you can do you can follow me on Bandcamp because Bandcamp is i guess becoming it's like taking the social media trend i don't know but that's a thing you can do it'll let you know when i put stuff up on there uh if you're one of my followers on Bandcamp, that's something that, can, that happens but uh yeah thank you guys very much uh i think i'm gonna make some uh, uh make some tea or coffee Eat a little food, do a little writing. But I'll see you guys on Saturday. That's going to be the next one. Saturday is when I'm going to be releasing the next video. So I'll see you guys Saturday. Um, like, share, subscribe. Do all those things. Do all those things. Get notifications. You know what to do. You know how to make this work. All right. Bye.